Hey everyone, my name is Alexander, and in this video I will be showing you how I created an ambient system using Unreal Engine 4 and Auto Kinetic Wise. If you have not yet seen it, a demonstration of the system in action can be seen here. To start off, I just want to say that there are numerous ways of creating an ambient system, both using Unreal's native audio engine or other middleware. The method presented in this video is just an example of how I approached it. Now, I am not in any way a programmer, so the code might not be super optimized, but this is what I could achieve with my level of knowledge. So let's get into it. To start off, I needed to define the boundaries of an environment, or what I call an ambient zone, like the one you see here. I also needed to define what that would mean for the auditory perception of the sounds from an ambient bed inside it. When the player is inside the zone, I wanted the audio of the ambient bed to have a fixed surround or stereo image with an engulfing characteristic, and not really have a specific visual source, like a room tone for instance. However, when the player exits the zone, I wanted the ambient bed to have a more three-dimensional characteristic in terms of panning, based on the player's orientation so that the player hears where the sound is coming from on the outside, although not its exact source of origin inside. Before I could start with this, however, I first needed a way to know when and where to play the audio from the ambient bed, and also have the audio transition naturally and realistically in terms of audibility, depending on the player's position in relation to the zone. The solution I came up with for this is primarily based on Bjorn Jacobson's idea in his YouTube series on Weiss and Unity that I will put in the description. First of all, I created two blueprint classes. The first one defines the environment or the zone and its boundaries, which I have called a room blueprint. This will be the main blueprint where we as sound designers primarily input all our needed parameters and values, as you can see here. The other blueprint plays the ambient sounds and controls more specific behavior of the ambience. This ambience blueprint is an audio emitter and will have the shape of a sphere and an attenuation radius that will affect the volume and frequencies of the sound depending on the player's position in relation to the center of the emitter which is pretty standard game audio stuff. This sphere or emitter will also move dynamically with the player and try to have the same position as the player at all times, as you can see here. This will ensure that the audio from the emitter will be perceived at the same location with the same volume all the time when the player is moving inside the ambient zone. However, this ambient audio emitter can only move with its center inside the boundaries of the ambient zone. So when we are inside it, the emitter will have the same position as the player and the audio will be perceived at the same location and at its loudest. But when we move out of the zone, the ambient bed will be attenuated by the distance of the player to the emitter because the emitter cannot move any further. It can, however, still move with the player, but only within the boundaries of the zone. Now that we have a working emitter in an ambient zone, we can look at how I implemented audio directivity or directionality as a result of the player's orientation inside and outside it. In WISE, I have set the attenuation curve for the ambient bed. However, I have also created an RTPC that controls the directivity of the ambient bed. In this case, the audio file is a stereo file, 
but you can also use a surround format if you want to. So what I'm doing is setting up the RTPC with a parameter value range of 0 to 100, with 0 being no directivity and 100 being completely directional or three-dimensional. The way I'm using this is by defining that whenever the player is outside the ambient zone, I want the ambient bed to have a value of 100 or completely three-dimensional in terms of directivity, so that when we turn around, we can still hear the general direction of the ambient bed from the environment. But whenever we are inside the ambient zone, the audio from the ambient bed engulfs the player with a fixed stereo or surround image or a value of zero. Now let's take a quick look at the blueprints for this part. First of all, we start in the room blueprint. And here we basically check whether the player is inside the ambient zone or not. These are checks to see if the player enters, exits, spawns, or does not spawn within the environment. From here we do a series of things. We send some information to the ambience blueprint regarding different WISE event names and parameters. These parameters are among other things used to control when we start and stop the audio from the ambient emitter. We then check the distance of the player to the relevant ambient zone. And based on this information, we decide if we want to have the emitter follow the player and at what rate or how fast, because there is no point in using resources on having the emitter try and follow the player if it's too far away. In the room blueprint, we also set the RTPC values from WISE for the directivity of the ambient bed based on whether the player is inside the ambient bed or not. In the ambience blueprint, we basically just check if the player is within the attenuation radius of the ambient emitter in order to know when the sound should play. That is the essential part uh, of the blueprints regarding this aspect of the system. The next thing I wanted to try and implement into this ambient system was spawning three-dimensional ambience emitters. These are environmental sounds that can spawn at a random location 360 degrees around the player within an environment or ambient zone. They can also spawn at a random distance from the player between a maximum and minimum range and at random time intervals. The different intervals for time and distance can be decided by us and inserted into the details panel, like shown here. We can also decide whether we want to use this part of the system or not. In the example I'm about to show you, the locations of the spawned shotgun audio emitters are visualized and their distances to the player are printed as text in the top left corner. If we look at the code, we already know from the room blueprint that we send some input parameter information to the ambience blueprint that is connected to this ambient zone. Among them are the parameters that cover event names and intervals for time and distance, as you can see here. In the ambience blueprint, we then use the maximum and minimum time parameter values from the room blueprint to spawn a three-dimensional ambient submitter actor using a timer. But first, we need to check that the location where it will be spawned is within the bounds of the environment, not colliding with walls or other objects, and that it spawns only if it's within a certain distance to the player. 
we get a location in a random distance interval from the player, and then we rotate it with each time we execute the timer. If the conditions are true, then we spawn a 3D audio emitter and wait for the sound to finish before the actor is destroyed. We can then spawn another one. The last thing I wanted to implement into this ambient system is the possibility to use nested ambient zones, or ambient zones within ambient zones. So let's say you have a building with multiple small rooms. Then you can have one main ambience for the building and other ambiences for other rooms inside this building. Or you could have a huge ambient zone for an outside level, like the city, and then smaller ambient zones for buildings or areas in that level. What I wanted to achieve here is that when you enter one of the nested rooms or environments, you would start to hear the ambience or room tone from this room, like I have shown you already. But when you get further into the new room, the ambience from the outer room will fade and be attenuated the further into the new room you get. The same would also apply if you were to exit the small room and go back into the main room. And this will be able to work for any number of nested rooms. So let's take a look at how this sounds. I am not going to talk a lot about the code here, because most of this has to do with an acoustic transmission and diffraction system that I will cover in another video. However, there are some things I want to show you. So in this blueprint, I have set up some parameters that allow me to decide or choose which environments are connected to each other and if they are nested or parent rooms, like you can see in the details panel here. So a lot of the code in this blueprint is for other audio systems, like acoustic simulations for instance, that I'm not going to talk about in this video. But I still want to show you this part here. So when we enter a nested environment, we make sure that we stop the spawning of the three-dimensional ambience emitters of the parent room or environment. Because most likely, we don't need them when we are inside a nested room. We also check if the parent ambience emitter is in the list of emitters that will be affected with a specific occlusion value. We then do some more checks to see if the player is inside a nested room or not, and then we apply an amount of calculated occlusion value based on the player's location in the nested environment and distance to the door, or wherever the rooms transition. How we calculate these values will be explained in a later video covering the acoustic transmission and diffraction system. The distance at which sounds from the parent ambience will be fully occluded can be decided by us as sound designers in the details panel of the room blueprint. In WISE, I have created a very simple RTPC that controls the effect of the calculated occlusion values, simply named Occlusion. If we quickly look at the WISE profiler, we can see how the main room's ambient bed is affected when we enter the nested rooms. So that is all I have for this breakdown video. Like I said in the beginning, 
this is just one way of doing it. But it's the solution that I came up with for this project. I hope you guys liked it and feel free to ask any questions you want. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all again soon. Cheers guys!